Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome to, uh, to lecture number 13 of the series of public policy analysis. By this time, uh, uh, I'm sure you would have uh, uh, imagined or agreed that we are now more into the technical side of things, uh, more into the practical side of things. In uh, these lectures, what follows in this one and the other ones, we would probably be going through a few examples a uh, bit of graphical analysis uh, which would be uh, this uh, graphical analysis and examples of uh, internal rate of returns and uh, economic analysis of internal rate of returns and uh, related things uh, through a simple demand and supply analysis through the analysis of a consumer and producer surplus. These things will be covered in the uh, in the coming lectures. Uh, so. Hopefully you'd stay with me and try to understand this stuff because now it's getting a bit technical. Um, I'll try my best to get this point to you as uh, clearly as possible uh, so that you may understand and don't have any problem in understanding this stuff. For those who already have a background in uh, economics or maybe even finance, this uh, stuff shouldn't be uh, a lot of bother. So, but I've seen that a lot depends upon uh, the practice. Uh, once you tend to get into practical life, then uh, you tend to get uh, forget a lot of things. That's what happened with me. Uh, once I got into practical life and then got the opportunity to teach, uh, I found that there was a gap in between in which I needed to refresh uh, the concepts of the course and go through them again. So. That's uh, the way I'm going to go about it. Is that I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to start with the basics uh, and try to build from there, so that it's easy for those who don't understand economics and uh, the related stuff which we would be doing right now, some calculations of internal rate of return and uh, present values, and even for those who already have a background in this thing and have gone through this thing uh, it's uh, sort it would be sort of a refresh course so uh, let's move on to some challenging things first of all the previous lecture uh, what we studied in it uh, we studied a practical example of policy formulation application and refinement it was the madrasa reform program uh, the initiation implementation and its poor result, what happened when it was designed, what happened when it was implemented and ultimately we saw that the end of, at the end of the program, the proposed first phase uh, that was from 2003 to 2007, um, results was, were pretty bad and uh, this was despite the fact there were, that there were three government institutions, three government divisions, ministries uh, that were tasked with evaluating this project, implementing this project, or uh, looking after this project. So that pretty much tells about uh, their capacity um, and their uh, ability to handle those projects, which uh, again uh, was pretty poor uh, given the results. So what happened again was that there was a policy redesign. Remember incrementalism, that instead of just doing away with the policy, uh, you increment it and uh, try to add some features to it, uh, try to add good features to it and try to take out the bad features. So it, there was a policy redesign, it was sent to the planning and development uh, division. There was a new survey, a new survey was designed and a random sample was selected. Now this uh, was important because I told you that uh, it, it, when there are 8,000 madrasas, uh, uh, and this is just the official number, we don't know about the unofficial ones. It's not possible, it's, the government ne doesn't necessarily have the resources and the time and the capacity to go about uh, serving everyone, every 8,000 of those madrasas. So what happens is the easy way out is that you take a random sample. For those who have already had statistics and economics, it, this should be easy. Random sample means that uh, you just pick at random. It's not that you pick specific spot in a specific area, no. You just pick out something from an area of the, uh, and take a small sample as a representative of the whole population. Of course, it has its problems, but that belongs to statistics, not uh, this course. Um, 
for our purposes, uh, for the purposes of this kind of survey, a random sample would do. That would be good enough. That is fine. So uh, after that, uh, that uh, random sample was selected. Uh, it was applied uh, at the start to two madrasas where the survey was carried out. And then it was further refined, uh, the whole process, in uh, lieu of the observations of those who carried out the survey. And after the whole survey was carried out uh, from the random sample selected, there were some conclusions and interpretations from the gathered data. This is uh, the qualitative stuff, not the quantitative stuff. Uh, we didn't run any regressions or anything like that. We just, based on data and observation, made a few uh, interpretations. And one of the interpretations, if you remember, was that uh, quite a few of the madrasas were in good administrative uh, shape uh, compared to the public school. They didn't need a uh, lot of uh, building material or building outlays. They, uh, most of them had the paka buildings or uh, in buildings in good condition. They didn't need uh, additional expenditures. So an interpretation was that when making a policy about madrasas, all these madrasas, you don't need to set aside huge amounts in terms of building. Uh, um, the the uh, cap not the capacity but the physical buildings, uh, which is in contrast to what uh, happens in case of public schools because a lot of times during uh, my research, what we and with my colleagues we found that uh, most of them most of the buildings are in very poor shape and they needed repairs. Uh, they needed some extra uh, uh, building space to be built. So uh, in that case, uh, we needed, uh, we, in fact, we calculated that there was a uh, huge amount requ required if we had to uh, uh, make those buildings, the public school buildings, come up to date or uh, be in a good condition. I'm not saying a superb condition, but in a good condition. So in contrast, madrasas are already in good shape. Uh, they don't need that kind of outlay. So uh, that was an example of how qualitative analysis is done and interpretation is made uh, based on data. Uh, so hopefully um, this would give you a clue that as a researcher what you need to do when you go into the field. So let's move on to the lecture. The IRR calculation, uh, an example. So. In the last uh, lectures, in the last few lectures, we went through some concepts like the internal rate of return, the present value, the cost-benefit ratio, net present worth. So these are all the concepts that, uh, technical concepts that are used in uh, project designing and project outlays. These are used to calculate a certain amount of return um, um, expenditures. Uh, suffice to say that the project uh, nowadays uh, projects would be incomplete without these kind of calculations. These are the these are a necessary part and parcel of uh, project uh, design, and uh, naturally it would be used in uh, project analysis too. Uh, the reason it's used in analysis, this kind of calculation, is that as I have said before, as I've stated before that conditions don't remain the same. When conditions, uh, and we will see in the examples, uh, the, the calculations that we do in the, the this lecture or the coming lectures, that when the conditions don't remain the same, especially the economic one, the internal rate of return, it tends to change. And its change has uh, implications for the project, uh, for, for the application of the project, uh, how to go about it, uh, its feasibility and that kind of stuff. So uh, let's uh, move ahead. Uh, let's see an example, a practical one. Uh, and uh, let's see what happens. In one of the previous lectures, we went through definitions of uh, PV, IRR, cost benefit r ratios. L let us go through a stepwise calculation of the IRR, which involves calculation of other variables like the present value. So when you are calculating uh, the internal rate of return, the IRR, you first need to calculate the present values uh, for it. Without that, uh, you wouldn't have an internal rate of return. A uh, few basics. IRR is a useful yardstick for measuring the feasibility of investments, as I just said. Uh, notice, through, notice though that this kind of measure works best when future income and expenditure streams are well known. 
uh, you need to know the uh, what you are expecting. Uh, you need to know what you are expecting from a future investment. Uh, what kind of expenditure would you be making? Uh, you need to have a guess, an informed guess. And you need to have an informed guess about the income too. What you uh, want to get out of it, what you are expecting and the kind of uh, cash flow from it or the income from it. So uh, these are the two things that you need to know when you uh, intend to go about calculating IRR and uh, present values. All right, so for example, in the case of a bank account paying a specific fixed percentage on deposit, the income stream is well known. Uh, but in cases where future income goes through variations, calculating IRR is not that easy. Uh, for ex again, for example, the returns from education and training do not follow a straightforward trajectory. Now, see, there are two things. IRR, we have to do the calculation of the expenses that we are expecting in the future. We should also know what we expect. We don't say that. And as an analyst, you are not saying that as an analyst, आप ये नहीं कह रहे कि जी कोई आपसे ये नहीं कहेगा कि बिल्कुल एक्जैक्ट बिल्कुल जो हमें एग्जैक्ट पता होना चाहिए कि कितने पैसे लगेंगे और कितनी हमारी इनकम होगी कितनी आमदन होगी नहीं एक इन्फॉर्म गैस होना चाहिए बेस्ड ऑन कैलकुलेशंस जो आपने तारीख देखी है इसकी इसमें देखा है कि नॉर्मली इस किस्म के प्रोजेक्ट्स में किस किस्म का खर्चा होता है तो उसके मुताबिक आपको जब ये चीजें आईआरआर और प्रेजेंट वैल्यू कैलकुलेट करनी होती है तो ये चीजें एक इनफॉर्म गेस होना चाहिए कि ओवर द कोर्स ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट कि जितने साल में वो प्रोजेक्ट इंप्लीमेंट होगा अगर पांच साल का है तो उस पांच साल में खर्चा कितना होना है हर साल तकरीबन और फिर उसमें आमदन हम क्या एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं कि क्या होगी कितनी होगी फिर उसमें एक ये भी डिस्टिंक्शन आ जाती है कि कुछ इन्वेस्टमेंट ऐसी होती हैं जिसमें हमें पता होता है कि कितने पैसे आने हैं मतलब बैंक अकाउंट है खाता बैंक में अगर आपका एक खाता है जिसपे एक शराय सूद मुनाफा मुनाफे के तौर पे मिलती है तो उसमें अगर सपोज आपने हजार रुपए रखवा लिए और उसपे पांच फीसद मुनाफा है तो आपको पता है कि हर साल पचास पचास रुपए उसमें मिलने हैं लेकिन बहुत सी इन्वेस्टमेंट ऐसी होती है जिनमें ये पता नहीं होता कि इनकम और एक्सपेंडिचर को क्या होगा खर्चे को और आमदन में वो किस तरह होंगी क्या वो स्ट्रेट लाइन स्ट्रेट ट्रेजेक्ट्री पे आएंगी या बिल्कुल फ्लैट जाएंगी नहीं उसमें नहीं पता होता मैंने मिसाल इसमें दी एजुकेशन की ये कोई पता नहीं होता किसी को भी अभी आप भी एजुकेशन ही इस इन्हीं लेक्चर्स के थ्रू यू आर गेटिंग योर सेल्फ एजुकेटेड राइट बट लेकिन इसमें आपको कोई ये अंदाजा नहीं है कोई एश्योरिटी नहीं है कि वट काइंड ऑफ इम्पैक्ट वुड इट हैव on your income in the future. Uh, what would that be? Just tra muje nahi pata tha, just tra aurogo nahi pata, jitne logo ne taaleem ki hai, abhi jo kar rahe hai. To is mein bhi phir internal rate of return jo hoti hai, wo calculate karna wo itna asaan nahi hoti, wo fluctuate karti rahti hai. Kyunke income stream or expenditure stream jo hai, that doesn't remain the same. To wo fluctuation hoti rahti hai. So, ye do cases hai, in mein distinguish karna chahiye ke kis kisam ke hai. Now consider that an individual decides to put a bomb example with Rafa Rain. Now consider that an individual decides to put rupees 1000 in a bank account for 6 years uh, that pays 5% interest rate yearly. Salana Munafa, Che Fisad, 5 Fisad, Che Salta. Again, it's not necessary that the interest is yearly, interest could be monthly. Both say banks, now we have a lot of different kinds of money. Some of them give a year, 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 some of them give a year. So it depends on which account you have selected. What this means is that for five years there will be annual interest payment and in the sixth year we can withdraw the principal plus the interest. Uh, so this uh, one should be uh, easy to grasp. There is uh, nothing very technical in it that uh, suppose in a bank account that uh, pays you, you, uh, you open a bank account that pays you 5% on uh, your deposit which is in this case we've uh, considered it a thousand rupees. So for the first five years uh, we are getting just the, uh, just the amount of uh, interest rate that is our profit on the money that we have deposited. In the sixth year, which is the last year, when we get the profit, we'll also get the principal back, which is 1,000 rupees. So the total payment would be 1,050 rupees in the sixth, uh, sixth year. The calculation is as follows. 
uh, you can see the table I have tried to make it as simple as possible that uh, the first year 50 rupees second year 50 rupees and that's a profit the 5 percent profit on 1000 rupees uh, third year 50 four year 50 fifth year 50 sixth year its principal plus the profit that is 1000 rupees plus 50 which is 1050 rupees so uh, how did I how did how do we calculate this return at 5 percent that is just multiply the 1000 by 5 percent 5 percent is 5 by 100 so if you cancel out the zeros uh, you are left with the uh, 5 into multiplied by 10 which is 50 so that's our profit which uh, I have already stated in the table this should be simple enough hopefully uh, this is one form of investment uh, now when we are calculating IRR and present values uh, and projects uh, I, uh, IRR for projects we have to we are looking at opportunity costs or we are looking at alternative investments at a certain time in an economy uh, there are uh, various options uh, investment option you are not just left with one option uh, there are various ones I have just mentioned that you can keep money in the bank account or you can invest it in a project this is the simplest one but there may be a lot more there may be uh, investment opportunities in the construction sector there may be investment opportunities in the services sector in the industrial sector then you can bifurcate by industry uh, if you go to the subgroups of the industries uh, there, there are so there are millions of possibilities you have to the basic principle over here the basic uh, grounds for going through this kind of stuff is that uh, you have to compare the investment opportunities and come up with the best one uh, so uh, over here what we are doing is that I've, I've just considered one investment opportunities now I'm going to consider an alternative one these two are present at a time and we have to decide in between them uh, which one is the best and we are using the uh, present values in IRR to decide that so now consider any alternative investment of buying a machine that pays rupees 200 for six years uh, on an investment of rupees 1000 difference from the first investment there is no lump sum amount waiting at the end meaning principal plus profit eh? so th there is a difference over here uh, in this investment this is different from the other one because you are just buying a machine uh, and, and you bought it for a certain time suppose six years you've calculated that for the six years that you are going to have this machine this is going to pay you um, 200 rupees yearly, uh, yearly so the income stream from uh, buying a machine and operating a machine is 200 rupees yearly compared to 50 rupees uh, of the bank account uh, so but the difference over here is that uh, we won't be getting uh, if you have bought a machine you won't be getting the principal back the thousand rupees that you've already spent no uh, machines are by that time time uh, going by the principle of depreciation it won't give you much uh, in fact for this consider uh, for this example we consider that it would give you nothing even if you s try to sell it it won't sell so you made an expenditure you won't be getting anything back the only thing that you're getting in those six years with this thing is that you're getting a, an income stream that is 200 rupees uh, yearly from this machine so um, again the table in which I have uh, uh, sorted out the years uh, uh, stated the years and then the return on everywhere which is 200 rupees so now make in comparison the comparative returns are tabulated as follows uh, you have the years 1 2 3 4 5 6 in the banks uh, in banks case you have the returns as uh, for six years as uh, 300 rupees the profits that was that is going to accrue to you that would be 300 rupees uh, but in the case of uh, machines that would be only 200 rupees now uh, don't get confused I'm going to explain wh what is happening over here in the case of uh, uh, first one the bank I've, I haven't included the principal amount we are just considering the profit uh, the income stream remember we are just considering the income stream we are not talking about principles and that kind of thing for the moment uh, this is just a comparative uh, analysis of the profits so you uh, oh, but in the next one the machine it's only 200 why 200 because if you add up all that 
you have to take out the 1002 which you initially invested remember I said that you won't be getting anything back uh, machine won't sell it would be obsolete so you have made an expenditure of 1000 in banks case you would be getting back the principal um, so uh, you don't need to take out the principal amount as an expenditure from the income uh, but in this case uh, you need to take out the in the case of machine you need to take out the thousand from the total profit because it's an expenditure uh, accrued and uh, it gives you the total leftover profit is 200 so uh, w if you look at this would wouldn't you agree that uh, 300 is better than 200 and we should go for the bank um, not so simple as uh, we'd see that uh, it might not be the case uh, when we go about the present value stuff and then the internal rate of return uh, just uh, it's not about making guesses just on nominal numbers ke 300 rupees yahan pe hame jo munafa nazar aa raha hai aur dusra machine se jo munafa nazar aa raha hai wo 200 rupees hai to iska matlab hai ke bank wala option acha hai aur machine wala acha nahi hai nahi aisi baat nahi hai uh, abhi usme jab hum phir present values nikalenge internal rate of uh, rate of return nikalenge to phir hame pata lagega ke kaun sa uh, option jo hai wo zyada munafa wala hai और कौन सा ऑप्शन जो है वो कम मुनाफे वाला है कम फीसबल है इसमें अगेन ये बात मैं आपको दोबारा क्लियर करता चलूँ कि पहले जो बैंक वाली जो स्टेटमेंट है मुनाफे की इसमें आप देखेंगे कि सिर्फ मुनाफा ऐड किया हुआ है उसमें जो मैंने वो हज़ार रुपये नहीं निकाले जो हमने खाते में रखवाए थे वजह यह है कि वो हज़ार रुपये हमें आखिर में वापस मिल रहे हैं इसीलिए उसको मुनाफे से हमने मनफी नहीं किया उसे सब्ट्रैक्ट नहीं किया मशीन के केस में चूंकि मैंने ये कहा कि मशीन दोबारा छः साल बाद उसकी कदर कीमत ख़त्म होगी होगी और वो बिकेगी भी नहीं अगर बिकेगी भी तो बहुत कम कीमत पे बिकेगी तो इसलिए उस में से जितना भी ये मुनाफा हो रहा है उसमें से हमने वो हज़ार रुपये निकाल लिया क्योंकि वो खर्चा हो गया जिसको हमें वापस नहीं मिल रहा तो वो आखिर में उसका रिजल्ट यही होगा कि ये तकरीबन बारह जो बनेंगे उसमें से हज़ार रुपये निकाले तो दो सौ बच जाएंगे उम्मीद है ये आप लोगों को क्लियर हो गया होगा सेम point you may be wondering why the total income uh, in case of the bank is 300 while it's 200 in the case of alternative investment note here that I'm only talking about returns on income on two different investments the rupees 1000 of bank investment is the principal amount while the rupees 1000 alternative investment buying machine is purely an expenditure which wouldn't be retrieved not in full at least uh, the same thing that I just said so it would seem a straightforward decision, right? Mm, bank account income is more than income from machine, if you total that, as we just saw. Therefore, it seems a more profitable investment. Uh, but to arrive at an answer, we need to calculate the present values of both income streams. Now, if you are confused about uh, the meanings of these terms, discounting, present values, internal rate of return, you need to go back to the lecture in which we discussed it. I tried to make it as clear as possible. So you need to clarify this concept before we go over into, this, uh, over into these calculations. Because these are a bit technical calculations. Uh, you need to be clear about these concepts. Uh, so go back in case you haven't understood those concepts. Uh, don't be afraid to play those videos one again and again until you understand that concept. Uh, you can get help from anywhere you want, uh, net or your book, uh, textbook. Uh, it also gives you a definition. But I tried to clarify it, uh, modify it, so that I can make it as simple as possible. So uh, be my guest. Uh, if you can take it out from a lecture, your understanding, it's good enough. If you can't, you can use other sources too. So uh, hopefully it wouldn't be a problem. By now you've understood it. But anyway, I'm not going to go through definitions again. No, I'm just uh, going straight to the calculations now. So how uh, let's calculate the present values. Uh, the difference from above calculation here is that we will consider the initial rupees 1000 as an expenditure. Uh, remember, in uh, the calculations like cost and benefit ratio, we consider both income and expend expenditure adjusted for the present value. Uh, now you are going ahead and calculating certain ratios, uh, certain percentages, um, technical percentages. So if you remember from that lecture when we discussed all these things, uh, when you are discussing uh, these kind of the cost-benefit ratios, for example, net present worth, you need both the expenditures and the income. 
adjusted by the present value. So when, once you have those, once you have those, then uh, uh, th th then we can go ahead and uh, make calculations and uh, arrive at conclusions. The discounted values are as follows. Uh, again, go back to the formula for discount. What it is? Um, it's the income by one plus discount rate uh, raised to the power of the year. That was, I believe, A, which I stated in the lecture. So anyway, if you discounted uh, these uh, income streams and discount the expenditures, uh, discount the principal amount toward the expenditure, which is rupees 1,000, this is what you would be getting over here, as I've, finished, I've stated in the table. So it's all the six years. Uh, banks total 300 uh, but if you calculate the present value uh, which is uh, if you apply the formula of the present value uh, for every year for every year you'd be getting the present value of that uh, profit that you earn so if you calculate the present value of every year which I have and stated it in the table corresponding to it for example in the fourth year the present value of uh, the income of 50 rupees from the bank account that the present value would be 41.14 um, in the fifth year it would be 39 and in the sixth year uh, when we'd be getting our principal back to principal plus the profit that is 1050 in the sixth year its value would be 758 rupees the value of 1050 rupees so uh, you could see a gradual uh, decline as far as the present value of an income stream is concerned uh, even if you consider the last one there is a decline 1050 rupees in present value it comes to 758 rupees uh, the total if you uh, take it out from a thousand rupees remember that is the initial expenditure that we made uh, the one thousand rupees that we kept in the bank account in this case in the case of present values that would be also considered expenditures so from the income if we add up all these uh, present value numbers and take it out from uh, the expenditures from the one thousand that what, what we are left with is almost zero zero point zero one uh, contrast that uh, with the machine income stream uh, which looked smaller than the bank one in nominal terms and it is but once you take out the present values for the first year it's 190.48 for the second it's 181.40 you go on and by last year it comes down to 200 rupees uh, by the sixth year it means it's in actual if you adjust it for present values it's only 149.24 so uh, again how do you arrive at 15, the number 15.14 well uh, take it out from a thousand rupees that was the expenditure on the machine add up all the values of the years one two three four five six add up all the values the present values of these years and uh, take it out uh, from a thousand rupees and this is what you're left with 15.14 which is more than uh, what we are left with in terms of present value uh, of uh, the bank's investment option. Two questions here. Uh, why 5% was chosen as a discount rate for uh, present value calculations and how did we get uh, the end total of present value calculations? Um, why 5%? It's the raised rate of investment at bank account. Uh, and uh, represents the opportunity cost of investing in machine uh, again go back to your lecture if you don't understand the concept of opportunity cost uh, it's the alternative investment the next best option so that is why we pick that rate and in any case uh, as we'll go uh, further you uh, see that uh, the interest rate that is picked for uh, the valuations or the present value calculations or uh, for discounting that a lot of the times it happens in fact most of the time it is the option of the opportunity cost the rate of the opportunity cost the next specs best option that we forego in valuation of projects or analysis of a proposed public policy the opportunity cost of a capital is needed for present value calculations 
In this case, while comparing two investments, bank and machine, the opportunity cost of capital is the option we forego. Uh, the bank option and does it? It is five percent or it's five percent. Now, um, at this moment, I won't say that we've foregone the conclusion, uh, foregone the bank investment completely, but we are using it under the assumption that this is an alternative investment to the machine. Uh, we calculated the present values on it. Um, we are assuming that it's a good investment. We have calculated the present values, but to arrive at a final conclusion, to arrive at a final conclusion, uh, you'd need to uh, take out, uh, in fact, calculate the in internal rate of return. That will give you the rate. Uh, it will uh, signify what, it, what rate it would be, the final rate that we need to use as a discount rate. For the moment, we are just assuming, we are just making a guess, uh, since banks already ha had offered a rate for profit. So uh, why not use it to calculate present values? Uh, because we are comparing those two investments. Let's compare it at what the bank was offering, 5%. So let's compare the other investment, the machines, too. Uh, this is the thinking. So. Uh, this is uh, pretty much why the, uh, this is the opportunity cost. We consider it an assumed opportunity cost at this moment. Uh, why 5%? Then the second one, total after present value calculations. The discounted present value total, the total at the end of uh, present PV discounted calculation is arrived at after subtracting it from total expenditure. I've already explained it. In deciding about investment decision, discounted numbers of income in lieu of expenditure expenditures made it's, is what really counts. So over here, uh, just don't look at the nominal numbers. The number you have given is you have so much money in this account, or this machine is so much money, these are nominal numbers. Uh, these present value adjusted numbers are not. When we talk about investments, we have to think about the number we are going to take in front of us, 1,000 rupees, 1,200 rupees, 1,500 लाख रुपया आ गया, डेढ़ लाख रुपया हो गया, पांच लाख, दस लाख, ऊपर जितना जाते हैं आप जाते हैं, जितनी अमाउंट है, लेकिन सिर्फ उन नंबर्स को नहीं देखना, जब हम पब्लिक पॉलिसी की बात करते हैं और उसमें पॉलिसी डिजाइन हो रही होती है, उसमें ये अंदाजा लगाने की कोशिश हो रही होती है कि क्या यार ये present values चाहिए होती है, internal rate of return चाहिए होती है, उसमें सिर्फ ये नहीं कि जो लिखा हुआ ऊपर के, इसमें इतना खर्चा हो रहा है, इसमें इतनी आमदन, हम expect कर रहे हैं कि हमें हमारे ख्याल में इतनी आमदन होगी, उसमें नहीं base करना चाहिए decision, ये base होगा present value, discounted value पे, और internal rate of return पे जो कि अभी हम calculate करेंगे, जो कि यही बात है कि in deciding about investment decision, these are the things that count. So strictly speaking, in terms of present value calculation, the machine represents a better payoff in the end as an investment option. Remember though that these are mostly used for large scale projects and investment outside of the investment world or the world of projects. It is not present value or like calculations that matter, uh, but rather the preferences of individuals. A person might be perfectly happy with receiving uh, rupees 50 as income for five years from the bank account option and then collect rupees 1050 at the end without giving any thought to present value or internal rate of return. Jahan tak baad aati hai bade projects ki. We are just strictly speaking about large scale projects. Ke amne ka ke ji ye large scale projects hai. इनके बारे में हमने बात करनी है, इनके हमने वो ऑप्शन देखना है कि कौन सा अच्छा है, should we go ahead with it or should we not? But in the real world, uh, every person has has their own set of preferences. मेरी प्रेफरेंसेस जो होंगी वो अलग हैं, आप जो स्टूडेंट्स हैं, जो लेक्चर्स देख रहे हैं, आप सब की प्रेफरेंसेस अलग हैं, जो आप चाहते हैं कि जिस तरह एक चीज हो, जिस तरह एक इन्वेस्टमेंट हो, वो एक अलग है आपका डिसीजन है। इट्स नॉट अ कंबाइन्ड डिसीजन। मेरे अपना एक डिसीजन होगा, मेरी अपनी एक प्रेफरेंस होगी कि मेरे ख्याल में ये ठीक है, ये नहीं है। नाउ यू सीन इन दिस कैलकुलेशंस दैट द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट फ्रॉम मशीन्स इ 
uh, or investment uh, from the bank account. But as an individual, it depends upon your preferences. You might be perfectly happy in putting away that thousand rupees in the bank account as a saving and earning the 50 rupees uh, yearly. Um, and in the end, at the end of the sixth year, getting that thousand rupees back plus the 50 rupees back, that would all count as, as your saving. But there might be circumstances that uh, you might prefer the 200 rupees coming over because, uh, because it's a difference of 150 rupees in uh, income stream per year. You might be perfectly happy uh, to get 200 rupees every year instead of rupees 50 and not get any money at the end. Um, and uh, so uh, it depends upon your preferences. Ho sakta hai aapko har saal 50 rupees jo mil rahe hain aap us pe khush ho kyunki aakhir mein aapko pata hai ki aapko 1050 rupees milna hai aakhri saal jo ke ek kism ki bachat hogi. Lekin ho sakta hai ki aapko ye nahi chahiye aapko aap chahte hain ki aapko fauri munafa chahiye. Aapko fauri paiso ki zarurat hai. Aap is kism ke investor hai jo ke liquidity ko dekhta hai. कि मैं मेरे पास ऐसी इन्वेस्टमेंट होनी चाहिए जो कि लिक्विड है ज्यादा लिक्विड मतलब यह है कि वो जल्दी से कैश में कन्वर्ट हो जाती है और ज्यादा कैश देती है इस सेंस में तो फिर प्रेफरेंस जो है आपकी फिर किस इन्वेस्टमेंट में इस केस में इस केस में फिर जाहिर है उस इन्वेस्टमेंट में होगी जो कि हर साल दो सौ रुपए दे रहे हैं बजाय पचास रुपए के दैट इज द मशीन इन्वेस्टमेंट सो ये डिपेंड करता है कि कौन क्या चाहता है अपनी प्रेफरेंसेस क्या है ये रियल वर्ल्ड की बात कर रहा हूँ जहाँ प्रोजेक्ट्स हो गए लार्ज स्केल प्रोजेक्ट्स हो गए गवर्नमेंट सेक्टर में एनालिसिस होगी इस तरह की तो वो उसमें तो ये कैलकुलेशन आती ही आती हैं यू हैव टू डू दिस कैलकुलेशन बट ऑन एन माइक्रो लेवल ऑन एन इंडिविजुअल लेवल ऑन ए हाउस होल्ड लेवल थिंग्स आर डिफरेंट इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन प्रेफरेंस नॉट एग्जैक्टली ऑन प्रेजेंट वैल्यू और इनकम इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न इनफैक्ट बहुत से हाउस होल्ड्स को ये चीज़ें पता ही नहीं होती ये सिर्फ प्रोफेशनल्स को पता होती है इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न स्टॉक मार्केट्स में जो लोग इन्वेस्ट कर रहे होते हैं या इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स होते हैं जो कि बड़ी बड़ी फर्म्स में इन्वेस्ट करते हैं ये उन लोगों के लिए इन्फॉर्मेशन होती है फाइनेंशियल बुकलेट्स में होती हैं जो उनके वो हर साल फाइनेंशियल बुकलेट्स छपती है इन्वेस्टर्स की इन्वेस्टर की इन्फॉर्मेशन के लिए ये चीज़ें उनमें होती हैं For household, for those who, uh, for person like me, for a person like you, uh, considering that we are just ordinary citizens, हमारे लिए ये चीज़ इतनी अहमियत नहीं रखती हमारे लिए ये चीज़ अहमियत रखती है जो हमारे जहन में है वो ये इस तरह की चीज़ होती है कि the way to go about it is कि मैं ये देखना चाहता हूँ कि मैं क्या चाहता हूँ क्या मैं ये चाहता हूँ कि छः साल बाद चलो पाँच साल बाद मुझे पैसे मिल जाए एक ही दफ़ा मिल जाए ज़्यादा मिल जाए मिसाल के तौर पर स्टेट लाइफ वगैरह की जो ऑप्शन है इंश्योरेंस की जो ऑप्शन है वो यही करते हैं कि खास मुद्दत तक पाँच साल दस साल की पॉलिसी होगी पंद्रह साल की बीस साल की होगी तो वो आप हर साल पैसे जमा करवाते रहते हैं उस पर मुनाफा बनता रहता है दस साल के आखिर में पंद्रह साल के आखिर में आप मुनाफे समेत वो जो आपने प्रिंसिपल अमाउंट जमा करवाते रहे वो सारी ले लेते हैं तो वो आपकी बचत होगी आई एम डूइंग दैट दैट इज़ द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इंश्योरेंस स्टेट लाइफ डज दैट ओवर हेयर आई बॉड स्टेट लाइफ इंश्योरेंस and it uh, you give a certain amount i give a certain amount every year uh, and the profit accrues on it the profit accrues on it so in the end whenever i take it out after 10 years after 15 years uh, that uh, would depend upon my preference when i take it out i am going to get all the principal amount that i have been uh, uh, depositing every year plus uh, the rate of profit on it whatever profit has been made on it yearly i'm going to get that all so it would be a, a saving and of course i would i am expecting that it would be a huge saving uh, everybody expects that but the basic issue the basic point what i'm trying to get it uh, get at you is that uh, differentiate between an individual and a household individual household and uh, what a government does in terms of uh, implementing a public policy and a project Next, what the calculations using uh, present value have done is that it has told us the option that is better in terms of a discounted future income stream. Um, present value calculations have told us that when we do discounts, we will see which value is good or which value is good. Which is the positive value of the machines. Which is the positive value of the machines. Now that we have chosen an investment option, uh, the next step is to calculate an IRR for that investment. Put simply, IRR is the discount rate. 
that makes the present value of a machine's income stream total to zero. Why we take it to zero? Why is it zero? In the lecture, I have explained it in the notes. Mein bhi explained kiya hai. You need to get a hold of these things. You need to get a hold of these things. Uh, for any question about why zero refer to the lecture about discounting an IRR we already know about the 5% number uh, which gives us rupees 15.14 as a return we want to know the number that makes this return equal to zero again uh, why would we want this return equal to zero go back to the lecture and try to make sense of it the logical step is to uh, try a higher percentage that is the six percent however if we make the discount calculations as we did above we will get a number that less than zero which is not acceptable it should be a positive number uh, logically this implies that the rate that we are looking for is somewhere between these two numbers logical step सिंपल सी मंतक है वो ये है कि अगर हम एक ऐसा नंबर देख रहे हैं एक ऐसी परसेंटेज देख रहे हैं इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न में हम यही करते हैं कि एक खास वो नंबर देखते हैं जिससे इनकम स्ट्रीम जो होगी अब जिस तरह पंद्रह शारिया चौदह थी मशीन के केस में वो हमने वो इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न देखना है कि जिससे वो पंद्रह शारिया चौदह जो है वो तकरीबन सिफर के करीब चला जाता है क्यों चला जाता है क्या वजह है इसकी मंतक क्या है ये आपको पहले के लेक्चर से वो देखना पड़ेगा और उससे ट्राइड में उससे ये चीज़ जो है समझ नहीं पड़ेगी ये ज़रूरी है लेकिन अभी देखिए पाँच फीसद रेट पे हमने जब ये सारा कैलकुलेट किया था इस पर अगर पंद्रह शारी या चौदह आ रहे हैं तो जब इसको कम करना है तो इट इज़ लॉजिकल कि आप एक ज़्यादा इससे थोड़ा सा शराय सूद ज़रा ज़्यादा कर लें इंटरेस्ट रेट उससे ज़रा ज़्यादा कर लें तो लेट इस बिगेन वी बिगेन विथ सिक्स परसेंट इट इज़ लॉजिकल स्टेप कि जी पाँच फीसद की बजाय चलें छः फीसद करके देखते हैं क्या ये सिफर के करीब आता है आ, नहीं सिफर के करीब नहीं आता बल्कि ये सिफर से नीचे चला जाता है नेगेटिव नंबर हो जाता है जो कि नहीं होना चाहिए हम सिर्फ एक पॉजिटिव नंबर देख रहे हैं सिफर या सिफर के करीब करीब नेगेटिव उससे नीचे ना हो आ, हम वो देख रहे हैं छः जब हम ट्राई करते हैं तो वो आ, जो ये नंबर है जो रिटर्न हैं वो सिफर से नीचे चली जाती हैं इसलिए ये छः नहीं हो सकता तो फिर क्या कहते हैं आगे हम ये करते हैं कि छः फीसद से ज़्यादा काम करके पाँच अशारिया आठ फीसद कर दिया पाँच अशारिया सात फीसद पाँच अशारिया छः फीसद पाँच अशारिया पाँच फीसद इस तरह करते रहते हैं जब तक कि ये नंबर जो है प्रेजेंट वैल्यू का जो नंबर है ये सौ के करीब नहीं आ जाता तो देखते हैं कि कौन सा नंबर है जो कि इसमें आता है ट्राई मेकिंग द कैलकुलेशन एट फाइव एंड लाइक वाइज इन द एंड द रेट एट विच डिस्काउंटेड रिटर्न रीच जीरो जिस तरह के हमने पहले ही प्रेजेंट वैल्यू कैलकुलेशन की थी उसी तरह इस वक्त भी यही करेंगे इसमें भी उसी तरह प्रेजेंट वैल्यू की कैलकुलेशन करेंगे और वेरी नियर जीरो टर्न आउट टू बी फाइव पॉइंट फोर सेवन परसेंट पाँच हजार या चार सात फीसद पर जाके ये बिल्कुल सिफर के करीब पहुंच जाता है ये नंबर जो होता है इनकम का तो ये पाँच हजार या चार फीसद जो होगा दिस इज आर आई आर आर ये इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न है अगेन नोटिस दैट फाइव पॉइंट फोर परसेंट आई आर आर इज हायर दैन फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द बैंक अकाउंट रिटर्न विच मेक्स द कंपेरेटिव रिटर्न ऑन मशीन मोर अट्रैक्टिव अभी दोबारा देख लें जब हमने एक इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न भी निकाली तो वो पाँच हजार या चार चार फीसद आई जिसपे ये इनकम जो होती है या आमदन जो होती है ये तकरीबन सिफर पर पहुँच गई उसके नज़दीक नज़दीक पहुँच गई तो पाँच हजार या चार फीसद जो है वो बैंक जो आपको ऑफर कर रहा है पाँच फीसद वो उससे ज़्यादा है तो दैट मेक्स इट पॉजिटिव इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑप्शन कि ये ज़्यादा अट्रैक्टिव इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑप्शन है इसमें हमें ज़रा ज़्यादा आमदन की उम्मीद नज़र आ रही है इसका मतलब यही है तो सो वी वेंट थ्रू ऑल दिस प्रोसेस वी सॉ के हमने एक सिंपल से एग्जाम्पल ली ये दो हमें ऑप्शन हैं एक है कि इन्वेस्टमेंट बैंक का और रियल वर्ल्ड में भी वेन यू डी डू द रियल वर्ल्ड कैलकुलेशन विच आई होप यू विल लेट सम टाइम इन योर प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ दैट यू हैव टू यू वुड बी लुकिंग एट डिफरेंट इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑप्शन नॉट जस्ट वन और टू देर वुड बी मल्टीपल वन सो यू हैव टू डिसाइड बिटवीन द बेस्ट वन यहाँ पे आपको दो इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑप्शन थी एक सादा करके एग्जाम्पल मैंने आपको बताई कि दो इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑप्शन हैं 
ایک ہے کہ بینک میں پیسے رکھوائے جائے اور اس پہ اس سے انکم کمائی جائے اس سے آمدن لی جائے اور دوسرا مشین خریدی جائے اور اس سے سالانہ آمدن لی جائے دونوں کا جو عرصہ ہے وہ چھ سال کا ہے تو اس میں کون سی اچھی ہے فرسٹ وی لوک ایٹ دن جسٹ نومینل نمبرز وی جسٹ ایڈیڈ اپ دا انکم سٹریمز اینڈ ون ٹرنڈ آؤٹ ٹو بی ٹو ہنڈریڈ دا ادر ٹرنڈ آؤٹ ٹو بی تھری ہنڈریڈ دا بینک ون But those are nominal numbers. It would be, uh, as I just, as I mentioned, it would be a mistake to just focus on that. So, uske baad humne kya kiya? Ke ek waqiye ek andaza lagane ke liye ke ye investment option achhi hai ya nahi hai. To uske liye humne present value bhi calculate ki aur phir uske baad present value jab calculate ki aur usme jo achha option aya, uska humne internal rate of return nikala. Aur dekha ke wo internal rate of return jo aa raha hai, وہ دوسری جو آپشن تھی ہمارے پاس بینک اکاؤنٹ کی اس کے مقابلے میں بہتر ہے یا نہیں ہے دونوں کیسز میں پریزنٹ ویلیو بھی جب ہم نے نکالی اس میں بھی وہ اس سے بڑا تھا نمبر بینک کا جو پریزنٹ ویلیو کا نمبر تھا اس کیس میں بھی جب ہم نے انٹرنل ریٹ اور ریٹرن بھی نکالی تو جو ہمیں شرائع سود مل رہی ہے وہ اس کے مقابلے میں زیادہ ہے مطلب یہ ہے کہ منافع انویسمنٹ پہ ہمیں اس سے زیادہ ملے گا مقابلتاً کمپیرٹیولی دیر وڈ بی مور پروفیٹ So that is how we come uh, to a conclusion about the internal rate of return of a certain project. In this case, it's 5.4%, which uh, we will use it as IRR. And then uh, in all the project during its application, uh, during its designing, uh, during other phases, and see uh, and, uh, in the coming lectures, in the coming example, examples, you are going to see a demonstration of uh, uh, you're going to see the basics or you at least we are going to study the theory in the coming lectures of uh, why the internal rate of return changes and what its implication is uh, for investment uh, so uh, stay with it uh, stay with me we'll be going through a lot of stuff so now that we've uh, calculated the present value and we've calculated uh, the internal rate of return I gave you a simple example of that uh, it's time to look at some of the applications of the internal rate of return the real world applications uh, the first one is the bond sale at a discount for those of you with an economics uh, background even for those of you who do, doesn't don't have a uh, background in economics and finance this should be easy you must have heard about a bond yet the Kriban ہر ایک نے بانڈ کے بارے میں سنا ہوگا کہ حکومت نے بانڈ کا اجراہ کر دیا بانڈز اتنے کے بک کے بانڈز پہ جو ہے شرائے سود اتنی ہے شرائے منافع جسے کہتے ہیں اتنا ہے you must all have heard about it just recently about two to three months ago the government issued euro bonds government of Pakistan they issued euro bonds at an extremely high rate around six percent so when you one when one has to analyze that policy uh, one uh, in a technical sense uh, then again you have to calculate the internal rate of return to see what whether it was a good investment or not as an investor no I'm not saying as a government official as an investor uh, as a government official if you are uh, looking at the policy you would be calculating internal rate of returns because you know that the investors to whom you are offering the bonds as part of the government would also be looking at those in uh, internal rate of returns and making the calculation so it's uh, imperative that you do that and offer it at a rate that makes it attractive for them حکومت تو bonds کا اجرا کر دیتی ہے ٹھیک ہے لیکن جو investor ہوتا ہے نا جی انویسٹر بھی یہ چیز اس میں دیکھ رہا ہوتا ہے جو خاص طور پر انسٹیوشنل انویسٹر ہوتے ہیں جو کافی عرصے سے انویسٹنگ کر رہے ہیں جو ان چیزوں میں مائر ہیں وہ ان چیزوں کا انٹرنل ریٹ آف ریٹرن دیکھتے ہیں تو آپ کو as part of the government مجھے یا آپ if you are part of the government and making these calculations why is it important for you آپ کے لئے کیوں ضروری ہے آپ نے تو صرف بانڈ کا اجرا کرنا ہے نا آپ کے لئے کیوں یہ ضروری ہے کہ ان چیزوں کو جانے وہ آپ کے لئے ضروری اس ل کیونکہ اگر آپ نے اس چیز کو بیچنا ہے بانڈز کو بیچنا ہے تو پھر آپ کو یہ بھی پتا ہونا چاہیے کہ انویسٹر کیا چیز دیکھے گا اس میں اور کیا چیز اس کو کھینچ کے لائے گی اس کی طرف اور وہ ہوتی ہے انٹرنل ریٹ آف ریٹرن جو کہ انویسٹر کلکلیٹ کرتا ہے سو ان میکنگ ان ایشوز ریلیٹڈ ٹو بانڈ سیلز 
uh, it's uh, imperative it's almost necessary i don't know if it is uh, completely necessary and we can do it without it we can do the bond sales without it i think we can but uh, from a technical point of view you need to carry out these calculations so uh, let's go ahead with it first of all what's a bond it's uh, basically a debt instrument or a way of acquiring debt uh, through bond sales what the issuer does is that it is promising to pay the principal amount plus a certain percentage in profit monthly uh, by annually or annually these can be issued by a government or a corporation or a private entity acha ye abhi humne baat ki bonds ki gayi hai hukumat yahan pe to sirf hukumatein hi ijra karti hain humne zyada tar yahi suna hai jo bar mumalik hai jo iktisadi taur pe jinhe hum kehte hain industrialized countries ya taraki yafta mumalik hai wahan pe jo corporations hoti hain private corporations ya private organizations hoti hain badi badi wo bhi bond ka ijra karti hain wo bhi bonds bechti hain बॉन्ड बेसिकली होता क्या है बॉन्ड ये होता है वी आर टेकिंग ऑन डेट ये कर्जा लेने के लिए कर्जा अक्वायर करने के लिए ये एक तरीका कार है इंस्ट्रूमेंट जिसे कहते हैं इट्स अ तरीका कार इट्स अ वे ऑफ एक्वायरिंग डेट क्या इसकी अट्रैक्टिवनेस होती है अट्रैक्टिवनेस इसकी ये होती है कि जिस तरह वो बैंक अकाउंट वाले अभी हमने एग्जाम्पल देखी थी कि ये ले लें आप बॉन्ड इतने रुपये का आप ले लें हम आपको ऑफर कर रहे हैं और इस पर सालाना या माहाना या जो भी वो डिसाइड करे गवर्नमेंट हम आपको इतना इतना मुनाफा देंगे और जब वो टाइम गुजर जाएगा जितने साल का वो बॉन्ड है मसलन हमने पाँच साल का बॉन्ड का इजरा किया तो पाँच साल के बाद जो है वो बॉन्ड का जो पाँचवें साल मुनाफा बनता है उसके साथ साथ वो जितने का हमने बॉन्ड खरीदा था वो पैसे भी वापस हो जाएंगे तो इट्स जस्ट लाइक द बैंक अकाउंट एग्जाम्पल दैट वी स्टार्ट बॉन्ड इज समथिंग pretty much like that uh, so uh, the only difference being that uh, it was bank bank would be a private bank uh, a government bank but bonds are uh, usually and in, in this in these parts of the world bonds are usually issued by the government let us go to the example this example is of a common type of bond known as a discounted bond uh, which sells at a discount um, let me clarify why it a bit uh, let me बी एज सिंपल इज पॉसिबल डिस्काउंट जो लगा होता है बाजारों में किसी दुकान पर कीजिए हमने डिस्काउंट लगाया डिस्काउंट क्या होता है कि जो कीमत जिस पर वो बेच रहे थे उससे थोड़ी सी कम करके बेच रहे हैं दैट इज अ डिस्काउंट बॉन्ड्स में भी यही डिस्काउंट है कि जी पहले जो हज़ार रुपये उसकी वैल्यू है बाउंड बॉन्ड की और हम हज़ार रुपये नहीं बेच रहे हैं हम नौ सौ रुपये बेच रहे हैं सो इधर ऑफर हो रहा है डिस्काउंट सौ रुपये का दैट इज़ अ डिस्काउंटेड बॉन्ड वाई डू दे डू दैट वी जिस सी The example is of a common type of bond known as a discounted bond. Suppose there is uh, this offer of rupees one thousand bond with a return of ten percent for five years. Five years ka vakfa uh, bond ka five years ka bond hai aur uspe ten percent jo hai munafa hai share munafa salana selling at a discount of rupees nine hundred. Ab wo azar rupee ka bond hai lekin azar rupee ka khareed na nahi padega hume wo us discount pe de rahe hain kimi kam karke de rahe hain nine hundred rupee pe de rahe hain. आप ये कह सकते हैं कि ये भी इन्वेस्टर को अट्रैक्ट करने का एक तरीका है कि एकदम इमीडिएटली वो सौ रुपए का उसको बचत हो रही है उसकी और सौ रुपए का मुनाफा वो रियलाइज कर रहा है इज इट अ गुड इन्वेस्टमेंट द आंसर टू आंसर दिस वी नीड टू कम अप विद प्रेजेंट वैल्यूज एंड इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न फॉर कंपेरिजन टू अदर इन्वेस्टमेंट लेट्स फर्स्ट मेक अ टेबल That shows the future income streams at the discounted value values as we did before. Uh, जिस तरह के हमने पहले किया था एक टेबल बनाए सालाना उसमें देखेंगे एक साल हर साल में uh, कितने पैसे उसके मिल रहे हैं और अगर जब उनको डिस्काउंट किया जाएगा तो फिर उसमें से कितने पैसे बचेंगे हमारे ना अगर आप देखें टेबल uh, को इट्स एज सिंपल कि जिस तरह हमने पहले वो कैलकुलेशन की थी कि हर साल की जो इनकम है जो शरा मुनाफा के हिसाब से है हज़ार रुपये पे अगर दस फीसद का शरा मुनाफा है तो वो मतलब ये है कि हर साल आपको सौ रुपये का मुनाफा होगा सो देन वी डिस्काउंटेड दो दैट इनकम स्ट्रीम फॉर एवरी ईयर जस्ट लाइक वी डेड इन द केस ऑफ बैंक अकाउंट दैट इन द लास्ट ईयर वी डू द डिस्काउंटिंग of uh, the initial investment plus the uh, profit which is which would make it 1100 rupees in this case 
So we take out the present. So so we use the present value uh, and calculate it by using that formula. What we get over here is uh, again it's going down every year. Uh, so it started off at 90.91 as a discounted value for the first year, and by the fourth year, when we are not considering the principal, the original amount bought, it comes to 68.30. So it's gradually declining. In the last year, when the total is principal plus the profit is 1,100 rupees, we discounted it. That means it's 683 rupees. The total of all these comes to 100 rupees. And again, notice, uh, notice again that the total of the present value is gained after subtracting the original amount of rupees 900. Now, the bond for the bond as an investor, they uh, can the face value ni consider ki jari bond. Ki, ki wo ka bond hai. Nahin, ye ki consider ki jara as an investor. Mere liye kya important hai? Wo ye important hai ke maine bond kitne ka kharida tha. Aur wo maine kharida tha 900 rupees ka. Aur usi 900 rupees ko hum consider karenge aakhir mein jab hum wo ek ratios nikal rahe honge, addition subtraction kar rahe honge, net present worth wagera nikal rahe honge. Wo hi hum consider karenge jo original hamara kharcha hua tha. The discounted present value of future income stream turns out to be exactly the same as the discounted uh, as the discount. So rupee uh, jo dis yani aap dekhein ki jo original unne discount diya tha so rupee ka wo bilkul wohi hai jo ke present value nikali discounted uh, income streams ki to dono barabar hai. So the companies offer the discount in order to attract bond investors. Without a discount, when the investor figures out that the present value of future income stream is equal to price today, they perhaps won't find any incentive to buy a bond. Ab, uh, this is a possibility. Ke, uh, they can't. Jab, uh, yaan pe investor ye dekhta hai ke agar azar pe ka mujhe bond offer ho raha, uspe itni itni certain percentages mil rahi hai mujhe. Uh, lekin uski present value jo hai discounted value. वो तकरीबन उतनी ही है जो के मुझे जिस जितना वो डिस्काउंट मिल रहा है तो क्या फायदा है क्या कोई फायदा है मुझे खरीदने का तो उसमें उसको इंसेंटिव नहीं नजर आएगा अगर वो दोनों इक्वल है डिस्काउंटेड वैल्यू और डिस्काउंट अगर वो एक ही जितने आ रहे हैं तो मे बी उसको कोई उसमें फायदा ना नजर आए इसीलिए शुरू से ही एक डिस्काउंट रखा होता है जस्ट टू अट्रैक्ट देम कि जी ये आपको देखे डिस्काउंट मिल रहा है और ये जो है uh, we will discuss it further, uh, we will discuss this thing further, again uh, this might be confusing for you but I am trying to make it as simple as possible, just take it for the moment, just take it as an incentive, the discount, just take it as an incentive uh, for luring the investors for buying a bond. This is a bit uh, different from project calculations. Uh, because the element of offering an incentive is not that strong as far as government run projects are uh, concerned. But when it comes to private investors, uh, the bond offered needs to offer an incentive to the private investor. The bond offerer needs, in this case, we are considering the government to offer an needs to offer an incentive to the private investor. Uh, the discount on uh, buying price is that kind of invest, uh, incentive. Uh, it marks that kind of incentive. So, यहाँ पे हम जब बात कर रहे हैं इसकी government के bonds की एक चीज ये notice कीजिएगा कि ये simple calculation है जिसमें हम लोग ये discounts वगैरह as an incentive for an investor इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं ताकि पैसे कठे किए जा सकें अकुमत अपना खर्चा चलाने के लिए लेकिन बहुत से अकुमत के projects ऐसे भी होते हैं specially social sector के flyo flyo बेबूत के जो projects होते हैं कि उसमें इस तरह की कैलकुलेशंस की कोई जरूरत नहीं होती क्योंकि यहां पे आप इनकम्स के बारे में बात नहीं कर रहे हैं यहां पे आ, मकसद इनकम नहीं है मकसद उसके प्रेजेंट वैल्यू और इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न इन्वेस्टमेंट्स दो इन्वेस्टमेंट्स हैं उनके درمیان कोई आ, एक कंपैरिजन नहीं है उसके درمیان कोई एक तकाबली जायजा नहीं है नहीं आ, जब इस तरह के इन्वेस्ट सपोज फॉर एग्जांपल मैं आपको मिसाल दूं यहां पे पूरे एक मिनिस्ट्री है zakat की zakat और usher की एक डिवीजन है तो ये चीजें जो है zakat और usher जो होती हैं ये कोई इन इन्वेस्टमेंट पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से नहीं होती कि शराय सूद के हिसाब से हम कोई इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रहे हैं क्या ये उसका फिर जायजा लिया जाएगा कि अच्छा ये zakat का जो प्रोजेक्ट चला रहे हैं 
ये आई अच्छी इन्वेस्टमेंट है इससे हमें क्या रिटर्न मिल रहा है इट्स नॉट अबाउट रिटर्न्स ये एक रिलीजियस ऑब्लिगेशन है ये एक सोशल ऑब्लिगेशन है कि और हर माशरे में होता है चाहे वो इस्लामी हो चाहे ना हो बार ममालिक में बहुत से जो हम लोग रहे वो कोई इस्लामी माशरे नहीं थे आ, लेकिन वहाँ पे देखें ये सारे उनके इसी तरह के प्रोग्राम्स हैं वेलफेयर प्रोग्राम्स हैं फूड स्टैम्प्स हैं कैश रिफंड्स हैं कैश असिस्टेंट्स हैं ये सारे इसी तरह के जक़ात और रोशन वगैरह के प्रोग्राम होते हैं इनमें ये चीज़ें जो होती है इन्वेस्टर को देखना कि जी और फिर प्रोजेक्ट को देखना कि वो इसमें इन्वेस्टमेंट क्या है और उसका इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न क्या है इसको किससे कंपेयर करें ये चीज़ें जो होती है बेमानी हो जाती हैं बिकॉज फॉर अ सोशल कॉज यू डोंट नीड दीज काइंड ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट यू जस्ट नीड टू गो हेड विद इट एंड सी इन पर हैप्स इन सर्टन एस्पेक्ट पर हैप्स इन सर्टन एस्पेक्ट यू वुड नीड टू कैलकुलेट एज फार एज एक्सपेंडिचर्स आर कंसर्न यू नीड टू पर हैप्स कम अप विद दीज काइंड ऑफ वैल्यूज बट नॉर्मली इन दीज काइंड ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट्स विच आर रिलेटेड टू वेलफेयर इन्हेंसमेंट और सोशल वेलफेयर इन्हेंसमेंट यू डोंट नीड दीज काइंड ऑफ कैलकुलेश सो अगेन मेक द डिफ्रेंसिएशन बिटवीन दीज नाउ बॉन्ड सेल यू डू नीड एन इंसेंटिव यू डोंट नीड टू कैलकुलेट इन आई आर आर in order to attract an investor but in others you don't need to uh, these kind of uh, projects like zakat and insure and income support programs no there is no need to do that the next step uh, is finding the internal rate of return which will make the future income stream near zero just like above tinker with the percentages or the interest rates jaise ki humne pehle example mein kiya ki ab humne wo percentage dekhni hai कि जिससे वो जो इनकम फ्यूचर इनकम स्ट्रीम है वो सिफर के करीब आ जाए इट टर्न आउट दैट द रेट एट विच द फ्यूचर इनकम स्ट्रीम नियर जीरो इज ट्वेल्व पॉइंट एट परसेंट एंड दिस ट्वेल्व पॉइंट एट परसेंट इज आर इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न एंड इट इज द रेट विच द इन्वेस्टर विल यूज टू कंपेयर विद अदर इन्वेस्टमेंट्स टू सी वेदर इट इज वर्थ वाइल टू गो हेड विद बाइंग बॉन्ड्स इन केस ऑफ बॉन्ड दिस आई आर आर इज ऑल्सो नोन एज यील्ड टू मेचोरिटी अब देखें इन्वेस्टर क्या यूज कर रहा है इन्वेस्टर ने पूरी कैलकुलेशन की है उसमें आईआरआर भी उसने निकाला है आईआरआर जो निकाला है जिससे उसकी फ्यूचर इनकम स्ट्रीम जो होती है वो तकरीबन सिफर के करीब आ गई जैसा कि हमने ऊपर की मिसालों में भी किया था वो आई है बारह शारी आठ फीसद तो बारह शारी आठ फीसद जो है वो उसके लिए एक मार्क है कि जिससे वो और इन्वेस्टमेंट्स देखेगा कि इससे क्या ऑफर किया जा रहा है क्या फीजिबल है क्या नहीं अब देखें जो गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से ऑफर हो रही है वो क्या है वो दस फीसद है लेकिन जो बारह शारिया आठ फीसद जो इन्वेस्टर कह रहा है कि जी बारह शारिया आठ फीसद होनी चाहिए ताकि मैं मेरे लिए ये एक बड़ी अट्रैक्टिव इन्वेस्टमेंट बन जाए अब इन्वेस्टर ये करेगा कि उस बारह शारिया आठ फीसद पर देखेगा कि और जो इन्वेस्टमेंट्स हैं गवर्नमेंट के बॉन्ड्स के अलावा मेरे पास जो ऑप्शन है तो उसमें क्या वो अच्छी बनती है कि नहीं बनती उसके मुकाबले में ये इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न उसमें भी वो ये कैलकुलेट करेगा फिर वो देखेगा कि इन दोनों के दरमियान दो प्रोजेक्ट्स के दरमियान दो इन्वेस्टमेंट्स के दरमियान बॉन्ड्स की या कोई और होगी उनके जो दो इंटरनल रेट ऑफ रिटर्न है उनमें से कौन सी अच्छी है उसकी बेस पे वो ये डिसीजन करेगा ही विल डिसाइड ही और शी विल डिसाइड वेदर टू गो हेड एंड बाय बॉन्ड्स और नॉट सो दैट इज द एंड ऑफ द लेक्चर दिस वन आई एम श्योर इट्स बिट Uh, it's getting a bit more challenging than before we are doing the calculations and we are going to into the technical stuff but that is the beauty of it you have to go through this stuff you have to learn this stuff um in order to uh, be able to analyze projects and uh, be part of uh, project analysis uh, so in this lecture we went through some of uh, the practical examples not one of them was hypothetical example and then one of them was a real world example of discount bonds and we went through all the step first calculating the nominal profits then the present value we adjusted profits uh, and expenditures then um, we went to the irr and how decisions are made based on irr in both the cases so hopefully you had a good time uh, take some rest now because uh, you you i'm sure you'd have uh, um, it's a bit more challenging to you so take some time go out have uh, listen to some music or something relax and then be back for the next lecture where we'll be doing uh, similar kind of stuff so hopefully i'll see you next time take care allah hafiz